Now, one of the things that we can do is we can use what's called a split scope. Now, what a split scope is, is that we're going to have one DHCP server that has part of the scope, and we're going to have another DHCP server that has the other part of the scope. And this is done so that if uh, one machine happens to go down, I don't lose my entire infrastructure. And historically, we do what's called an 80-20 split. So the primary server that we're going to use for the vast majority of our communications is going to have 80% of our resources. So that's going to have 80% of the IP addresses. The IP addresses on the uh, bottom half here, these 20%, we're going to go ahead and surround this in red. This is only if that primary server happens to fail. Now, uh, we've been able to do 80-20 splits forever. Forever, 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 forever. This is the recommended selection. However, we had to do it manually. All that Microsoft has done is they have made it so that we have a graphical user interface that allows us to set up the 80-20 split automatically. Now, a gotcha with this is, is once we set up the 80-20 split, these two DHCP servers never talk to each other again. Never, 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 never. It's just basically going on one machine, doing an 80-20 split that configures both machines at the same time. But these DHCP servers don't talk to each other. So if you go in, ooh, in your infinite wisdom, and start uh, making changes on one machine, these changes are not going to be reflected on the other machine, and then you may end up with handing out duplicate IP addresses. <laughs> so it doesn't prevent, you know, they, they call it, you know, making something idiot-proof, but if you're a persistent enough idiot, or if I am, then you can screw this up. So <laughs> just be kind of cautious. Let's go ahead and show you how we can do this. So I'm going to go out to my, um, actually we'll go out to this machine here. We're going to go into Tools. Inside of Tools, we'll go into DHCP. And inside of DHCP, let's go ahead and make a scope. So go IPv4, here's our scope. We'll make a new one. We'll say New Scope. We'll say Next. And this is going to be the 10.3 network. So we're going to say that this is going to be CORP main, corporate main, 10.3.0.1. To 10.3.0.254. And we're going to modify this using classless inter domain routing, CIDR notation. And we're going to say that this is going to be a 24 bit subnet, which means the first three octets are going to be the network portion, and the last octet is going to be the host portion. Now, notice that I am doing the entire block of addresses, all 254 of them. I am not uh, leaving out any addresses for like the default gateway or DNS servers or any other infrastructure machines that may be in this environment. And the reason that I do that is so that I don't have to go in and fiddle with the range of addresses um, after the fact. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and set up exclusions. So what are we, 10.3, 10.3.0? So I'm going to say 10.3.0.1 all the way over to 10.3.0. I'll say 10. This is 10 addresses that we do not hand out. Those are 10 addresses. Now, if I want to, I could go into this uh, creation interface, and I can put in a delay. This is typically if you have two DHCP servers in the same subnet. In other words, I have a, a network interface card on my DHCP server that's in my subnet, and I have another um, DHCP server that also has a network interface card. They're both in the same subnet. But DHCP is broadcast-based, and I don't want them sitting there trying to fight and hand out the same IP addresses. Instead, what I can do is I can put in a delay that says, okay, I have two servers. This is the primary server that has most of the information, and this is the secondary server. So I'm going to delay the secondary server so it only hands out IP addresses if the primary server doesn't answer. Now, um, this is what I would normally do when I'm manually setting this up, but we're not going to do a manual installation. We're going to split it. So I'm going to set this at zero. So we'll say next. What's my lease time? By default, we have it at eight days. Then I'll say next. Still want to configure extra options for the scope. 
Um, yeah, I can do that. So we're going to go in and says, who's the router? We'll say 10.3.0.1. That is our router. We'll say next. What is our domain name? We'll say adatum.com. Are we going to do DNS? Here's my uh, DNS servers that I can add out in here. So we'll say next. Um, let's see, win servers. We don't use wins. Thank goodness. Do you want to activate it? No. I don't want to activate my test DHCP environment. All right, so so far we haven't seen anything spectacular, let alone split scope. So let's go ahead and split the scope on this. So we'll go ahead and slide this over. Now notice that my uh, corporate main has an address range of 1 to 254, and we've excluded the first 10, and we also have a scope option for the router, for the DNS server, for the domain name. And also notice that because we have set up WDS on this machine, we have option 60 set up that says, oh, by the way, I'm also a WDS server. So let's go ahead and split the scope. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go advanced. And I'm going to select split scope. So now we're in the split scope wizard. Let me check real quick, see what the IP address of the server is. Dot six. Well, that'll be handy. So we'll say next. And the additional server is 172.16.2.6. So we'll add the server, uh, 172.16.2.6, browse it out. Uh, all right, what's the name of the machine? Here we go. Uh, 172.16, eh, let's see if we can figure this out. I don't remember what the name of the machine is. Great, now I'm on the wrong RDP. Here we go. Um, we're going to say advanced. We'll say fine now. I think it's London serve one. Let's see if it shows up. London serve, uh, actually it's serve, ah, shoot. <laughs> I'll get there in a minute. Give me a second here. Got to remember what, uh, which one of these. I think it's this one. Oh, you know what? Let me just show you how I could do this. How do I know what this machine's name is? Well, one of the easiest ways is just say host name. H-O-S-T-N-A-M-E. And it is uh, server 1 R2. So I was correct in my assumption. So we'll go back here, server 1 R2, we'll say OK, we'll say OK, we'll say OK. And it goes through and it verifies that we do have DHCP, it verifies that I have permission to create scopes on there. So then we'll say next, and we'll give it a second. Uh, let's see. All right, now this is the 80-20 split that we have on here. We have 80 and we have 20. So the host, by default, is going to be the 80%. The one that I added is going to be the 20%. So the 80%, uh, this is our uh, exclusions that we set up on this machine. It excludes the extra 20%. So 204 to 254 is what I'm going to exclude. On the added server, which only has 20% of the addresses, it excludes that first 80%. So dot one to dot 203. So that also includes my exclusion range. And I can change if if I want. It figures it out. So what if I just type something in here? I say 80. And I go over here and it says, okay, it does the math for you. So it's actually pretty handy. So I'll say next. Uh, the host server has a delay of zero. Uh, the added DHCP server does not have a delay in it by default. That means if both of these are on the subnet, which they are by default, they will both be handing out IP addresses. So what we want to do is we want to add a delay. We'll put five seconds on the 20 percenter. And we'll say finish. And it goes through and it says preparation of the hope for scope migra uh, pre preparation for the host for scope migration. Uh, worked out, deactivation was successful, configuration of the scope, migration of the settings, configuration of exclusions and delays, migration rollback, everything's good to go. So now, this particular machine, notice that the exclusions, here's my address pool, notice that the, uh, the uh, address range for handing out hasn't been modified, and we still have excluded addresses 1 through 10. Now, um, I'm going to refresh this, and notice that it does show that we also have excluded the extra 20%.
So a couple things here. Number one, this is a dead XML interface. I could have exited the interface, came back in. But instead, I just hit the refresh button, and it shows me where it made that exclusion for me. Now, if I go over to the other machine, I'll go ahead and show you that. If I go over to the other machine and fire off, it's the hiccup console, DHCP. Don't call it the hiccup. It makes you look stupid. But <laughs> it's fun when you're doing a, uh, well, I use it for uh, if I'm trying to win bar bets in a geek bar. There's lots of geek bars, right? So, you know, you act like you're incompetent, and then people will believe you, and then you can take money from them, even though you're not supposed to. So slide this over. So here is the scope. Notice that we have a variation of the address pool. It's 1 through 254. However, the first 80% are excluded. Um, also notice that our scope options are there. We have the router. We have the DNS server. We have the domain name. However, option 60 didn't show up. Questions and answers. Why didn't option 60 show up? It was in the other one. Why isn't it in this one? Go ahead and chat it in. Why, oh, why do we not have op uh, option 60? Now, instead of my normal water, I decided to go healthy. So I'm having um, uh, Diet Coke. Hopefully, they'll send me 20 bucks for advertising their product. They won't. Uh, Jeff is saying the other server was a DNS server, but this one wasn't. Really? Would it be that simple? Jeff and Jim are both saying that. Really? You're right. <laughs> this machine isn't a WDS server, so it doesn't have to do option 60. You talk to this machine, this machine is just DHCP. It doesn't do WDS, so it doesn't have that option on there. You only have option 60 on the DHCP servers that, uh, that necessarily need it.